let's talk the walking dead so this episode is kind of moving us forward into our upcoming war with Negan and the Saviors and it's getting us to the point where we can find the kingdom on board so good old woman's intuition the episode starts with Carol in the bed sleep and she just wakes up in the middle of the night like basically I know something is not right so she is on a mission to the kingdom to find Morgan to find out what's going on so she's like, Morgan, what's going on? What happened? Is everything okay? You know, I talked to Daryl. Daryl said that everything was cool, that, you know, the saviors were no longer a problem, and that we beat them, but mm, something just don't feel right. Let me know what's going on. So basically, Morgan did not lie to her. What he said to her was, didn't you want to be away, and didn't you get what you wanted? So... If you want to know what happened, we can go to Alexandria and you can find out everything. We can leave right now. Let's go. We can leave. But otherwise, stay away how you have been and don't worry about it because you can't have it both ways. You you can't be a part of Alexandria and Rick and that world and be a part of this solo world where, you know, you're on your own so she had no choice she had to leave so Morgan has really assimilated himself with the group with the kingdom so they had a drop and Richard the crazy guy from the kingdom who just is so gung-ho for them to fight the saviors decides that he's going to sabotage the drop so that um, because he pissed off the guy the previous week that they're going to kill him. He predigs his grave and he's fully, you know, expecting to die. He's going to be the sacrifice that ultimately starts the war so he still gets what he wants. So they're supposed to bring them 12 cantaloupes. Well, lo and behold, when they get there, there's only 11 cantaloupes. But when Carol was walking from her house to the kingdom, she killed, well, she um, she hit a walker. She didn't kill it, but she put it, um, she disabled it so that it was just like laying on the street. When she left, after she talked to Morgan and she was going home, it was dead. Someone had killed it. They showed a shadow of someone, but we didn't really know who it was. Then we saw Richard, and he was looking at a little child's book bag that said Katie. Which, I, which we find out later is, I guess, his daughter's book bag. So this was him setting it up. So what he did, he took like a shopping cart, blocked the road, and then he pre-dug this grave. So when they were on their way to the Savior's Drop, they were late because there was a blockade. They didn't know what was going on, so they got out to explore, blah, blah, blah. So I immediately knew that it was him. Like, if they wouldn't have said it in that episode, I knew it was him. But the little guy, Benjamin, who was like Morgan's protege, who um, King Ezekiel was like best friends with his father, they end up shooting him when the drop is short to, sh to teach them a lesson, which they should have just, they were supposed to just do something like beat him up. But the guy um, who took Morgan's stick was just so gung ho to do something. So he just shot and he ended up shooting him in the leg. I guess he nicked a major artery. And poor little young Benjamin bled out. So they took him to Carol because, remember, she used to be a nurse. So they went to Carol's to see if she could help. And, unfortunately, he died. So, you know, King Ezekiel is pissed because he, you know, he, was, he really cares about Benjamin and his little brother. So Morgan goes ballistic because he was really close to Benjamin and he goes and is walking down the road and he starts kicking stuff he starts flashing back to the old like schizo Morgan with where he was like clearing stuff and like killing stuff and just like acting crazy and right and clear on everything and so he starts having these flashbacks and it's like clear clear because um and so 
he walks up on the grave um, and where everything was and he kicks this bin and lo and behold, a friggin' cantaloupe is in there. And he's like, who got out the car? Richard. So he goes back to the kingdom and he confronts Richard and he's like, basically like, I know what you did. And that's when Richard tells him like, well, I was all fully prepared to die and you know, but I'm going to start this war and whether you like it or not, you're going to have to kill because you're not going to be able to not kill because you know, like basically it's going down and I'm going to lead the war. So the saviors had told king ezekiel the next day they better show up and they need to bring the cantaloupe that they was missing because they only had 11 they were supposed to have 12 so they didn't show up and bring one so they go to do their drop and they bring the single cantaloupe so when they um so richard goes to hand it over to the guy morgan rushes him and chokes him to death and king ezekiel and um the people from the kingdom are just like stunned. Like they're like looking at him like what in the heck is going on? Because they've never seen crazy Morgan. They only know peaceful Morgan. So after he kills him, he stands up and tells the Savior like he set this whole thing up, you know, and da da da. Like he tells him everything. So he was like, and I just want you to know, you know, that we're on board. We understand. We're willing to do whatever we need to do. But Richard had told Morgan that we need to convince the saviors that we are on board with them so they don't suspect anything. Then we need to kill them and then we need to join Rick's army and, you know, and then fight them. So basically, Morgan is using that plan, but he didn't know you, I'm going to kill you in order to show them that we still on board. So... Morgan at this point has flipped the script like peaceful Morgan everybody can live and all that is out the window so he goes to tell Carol like everything because he's like on a rampage so he goes to Carol's and he's like let me tell you what happened um Negan and the Saviors killed Glenn and Abraham and they kidnap Daryl and Rick wants to fight them. And so she like, oh my God, like what happened? And he like, I'm about to go kill him one by one. Like he is ready like to be a one man army. He is Rick's twin now. Like now is when he need to go back and let Rick know. Like now we are Frick and Frack. We are macaroni and cheese. Like we both the same crazy again. Like my crazy match your crazy. So, Carol is like, basically, oh, okay, they killed my people. I'm on, Let me go over here to this kingdom and get these people together because we about to fight. So, she packs her bags and she goes to the kingdom, tells Ezekiel, uh, I'm about to stay with y'all because we need to get ready because we about to fight. And he was like, yeah, we are, but not today. So, they was replanting the little garden. And whatnot, but and then she asked Morgan not to leave. She said, You can leave, but stay. And so she like nodded to her um little house or whatever. So Morgan is staying at Carol's house, and Carol went to go stay in the kingdom. So basically, they flip flopped. So that's that episode. Next week, let's see what's going to happen because I don't know. But it's only three episodes left. It's gearing up. Sasha and um, Abraham's uh, little, what's it, Rosita, are supposed to be on their way to fight the saviors and kill Negan. So we'll see if she makes it or what happens. One of them probably about to die. But I don't know. But that was this week. So we're moving along to our war with Negan. Talk to you next week.